So <laughs> tell me a little bit about how hiring has gone for you, what challenges you've faced in hiring, how you've overcome them. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about your journey to being an employer who has employees who work for you. Sure. So um, hiring has been very uh, challenging. I would say one of the more challenging things that I've had to do with the company so far because I just only had the insight coming from someone who's applied for a job, right? Like, you know, going and to Indeed or going directly to a company and submitting my application and not understanding how much really goes into finding the right person for the position that you're looking for. So, I mean, um, I have two empl two employees now. So my first employee, um, she's part time, and she came to me actually through a friend. So that one was actually not. I would uh, the hiring process. I didn't really go through with her. It was okay. like, okay, great, good, let's do it. This time around, um, I was looking to hire a designer. So there's specific qualifications, mm -hmm. you know, and I really needed certain things to be um, to really hit the mark for the projects that I have coming and the things that are going on with the company. So I sat down and I wrote an ad and I was like, okay, this sounds good. And I included things like not just the nuts and bolts of like what I needed, but like the expectations as well of some, some of those cultural things we were just talking about, you know, being an open person, being willing to learn, being flexible, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that are, I think are part of the company that I'm trying to build. And, um, and with that comes, you know, benefits as well. Right. Like I don't, um, necessarily dictate like when they work their eight hours as long as they work their eight hours mm -hmm. like there you know there are advantages to to doing the virtual thing which is how my company runs um but you know i think the the just writing the ad was like really challenging it took me a couple of weeks just to write the ad and then i um i posted it up on indeed and i put it on linkedin and I had no knowledge of how that worked at all. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, <laughs> tip, if you do indeed, you get 48 hours. So make sure you're going through those resumes because they charge you for every single one. It is like, you, you have to be on top of it. And so like, I had almost 400 people apply like within the, like the first three oh, wow. days. It was a ton of people. And so I was shocked. I expected four. <laughs> so I was like blown away and I was like going through them all. And I, I was trying to like figure out, um, you know, how to filter them. That, that's my question. That's what I want to <laughs> dig into is how did you, how did you triage that? How did you, how did you go through 400 in probably something more than 48 hours? But I mean, it that was, was the goal, right? It was intense. Like, and I was like on that time clock because if you don't, you know, go through them, they're charging you. So, and you know, boutique design firm, I'm not trying to like mm -hmm. spend all my money on, <laughs> on applicants that I'm not even hiring, yeah, you know, gonna, like at that gonna, point, we're going to work on that ad together next time. Yeah. So, well, apparently it was a good ad because <laughs> they, I had a lot of applicants. So anyways, I filtered first was, um, you know, just if they had a portfolio, um, that's one thing, honestly, that kind of drives me crazy when, it, cause I've been in a role before working for companies where I've had to help hire a designer should know to port the portfolio on their resume. Like that's like the number one thing. Like if you don't have work that you can show, no, you, you're not going to be hired. Like you might be the greatest artist in the world, but if you can't show the work, like we, there's no way for me to, to, to know how great you are. So, and, and that goes, even if you are not a creative type who provides that kind of work, cause that may come up in a job interview yeah. is they may ask you, tell me about a time. You, mm -hmm. They may be looking for specific examples because they want to understand how you work, the quality of work you provide, what your what your beliefs are about providing quality of work. Yeah, and it's not like you know, um, I'm a big believer in um, people too. Like I want to know, I want to talk to the person. So like the first step is seeing if they have the required kind of skill set and the portfolio is how you get there, and then you know interviewing them, talking to them, making, you know, having, yeah. making sure there's some kind of a, a synergy, you know, finding out how they interact with, you know, past jobs, things like that. So, um, I feel like I did a pretty thorough, like interviewing process. Mm -hmm. Um, I really took my time and tried to like do all the steps. I didn't cut any corners. I even 
tried to do the re like the references part, mm -hmm. which that was kind of my that was my least favorite part because I had a hard time getting people to get back to me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like maybe that's a part that I could get better at. Um, just I emailed to like set up a time, you know, like I would with a client or anyone mm -hmm. else. And it took a really long time for some of them to get back to me. And it was like too long for me to wait really for the hire. At that point, I needed to like pick someone. Mm -hmm. So I think next time I'm just going to blindside them and pick up the call, the <laughs> phone and call them. <laughs> hey, we're going to do an interview now. You got time? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe not the candidate, like the interview for the candidate. Yeah, I would schedule that. But like the reference, the reference you know, for just sure, be yeah. like, hey. Yes, and right. Into, and into really nothing for, a, for an hour or so. Would love to see laser tag fitness up as there. soon as you hit the south side of vegas from maybe m resort going north it's just billboard billboard yeah. billboard billboard i know that because when we first moved here i was riding down and photographing every billboard to see what there is to do in the city right Very so yeah cool. exactly i'd love for one of those to be laser tag Very fitness. cool i can't wait to see it nice so that's the plan to world domination that's the goal what are the challenges you see yourself having to face to get there Sure. I mean, this is a classic entrepreneurial and leadership challenge, which is figuring out what are my strengths and what are the areas that I need help, right? And like a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm a little bit broad in my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of depth in technology. That's my primary background. Um, but I noticed that when I try to do marketing, I can do it, but I'm not thrilled about it, yeah. right? I'm thinking, oh, I got to get enough participants for today's workout, and it, it, you know, I'm, I'm stressed about it. I think for some people, that would be fun. Like, for me, the tech is fun. I'm not stressed yeah. at all. Figuring out how can I incorporate heart rate monitors into the taggers? How can I build these scoreboards and have, you know, achievements players can unlock mm -hmm. as they play more and more, setting up leagues? All that sounds so easy and fun to me. I'm not stressed at all. But marketing, I'm finding myself a little bit stressed by. And uh, the other one that gets me, uh, I can do finance, I can do tech. It's marketing and, oh, operations setting up the field every time, right? Uh, dealing with all the, I can do tech bugs, but just dealing with staffing, yeah. things like that. Those are the sort of near term challenges that you, I'm facing. You almost need someone with an events background. Oh yeah. To, uh, to go and figure out not, you know, what, what are the achievements that are going to get people not just coming in to get the achievement, but coming back to try again if they don't get it, right? Yep. What are the, you know, you almost need someone with an events background who knows how to bring people in and keep people coming back. That's a good point. Yeah, they'd be used to filling seats, yeah. which is effectively what's going on. I've got spots that need That's to be cool. filled. Right, currently there's a minimum number of players. Anything less than four versus four is, is it's hard to balance the skills between yeah. the players. Uh, so, you know, my long-term idea is to build out a sort of obstacle course, right? Like police training or military mm -hmm. training where one person can be shooting moving targets that appear and disappear yeah. and be running from spot to spot. So there's still a nice workout to be had if you come alone in some off-hour workout slot. I love that. But I don't have it yet, yeah. right? So I'm still trying to fit the minimum number of slots and somebody who does events, that actually could be a really that, good fit. Uh, that, that just occurred to me. I mean, I know we've talked about this before, but that just occurred to me. Someone with an events background. Yeah, nice. Could really be really be helpful to you and that's that's what Good i wanted tip. to get into uh next we've kind of already gotten into it is who's on your team now and who do you feel you need on your team oh right um so i think we kind of talked about that but if there's any one person you could get on your team whether it's by name or just the kind of the background and skills they have hmm. who would it be interesting yeah i mean really it's just those two areas that i talked about somebody who's got great operations head but also likes marketing and finds that to be a ton of fun um, because those are the two things, like I said, I want to be able to, to split the, the effort on the job, right? Rather than having to do all of it myself. Uh, so, you know, who's somebody famous that's great at marketing and operations. I want that person. That's the person you want. Okay. Well, if, uh, if you're good at marketing and operations, contact Michael. Nice, so, nice. um, so what is, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs go through this because you come from a corporate background, yep. working in tech. Now you're an entrepreneur. You're building your team for the first time. What is your approach to building your team? What is your approach to leading your team at Laser Tag Fitness? Hmm. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, one of the people I had working for me when I ran my first ever technology website building business. Mm -hmm. uh, building a team is so important to you because I have observed you doing that on multiple fronts with all of the things you're involved in in town. So what is your approach yeah. to enrolling people in the vision you have for things like Bunker Labs, for things like Global Entrepreneur Week, for things like what we do in the tech community downtown? Yeah. What 
how do you get these folks to come along? How do you, what do you do to get them to be that line out the door who want to be on Dave Berlin's team? So I, I stole this from one of the greatest mentors that I've never met. <laughs> uh, Simon Sinek, um, start with why it was very powerful for me. I have some crazy stories about how I'm connected to them. Um, I have met most of the people on his team. I, for whatever reason, I've never talked to him. Um, but, uh, a lot of what he he wrote stuck with me. I've, I've read all of his books, uh, but I use the framework of his basic understanding of why. Um, and it's too blank, so that blank. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I can help people discover that in, in a pretty easy, you know, half day thing that I can I can walk through with people. But the one that has it's it's changed for me. Right. If you ask me, I think I was on video. Uh, very similar to this in 2016. And I said, my purpose is to inspire veterans. So they're successful in their transition from service to civilian life. And they can then inspire other veterans. It's not that I don't care about that anymore. But when I really realized that community building is what I'm, I'm here for, mm -hmm. um, right now, the biggest why for me is to connect the people of our city so we can show the world who we really are. And there's, there's something that people that want to do that, they gravitate. So it, it starts with that. And then it's having a clear path of how I believe we can do it. And normally that comes through some type of an organization that's already done it. Uh, I, I do like to, I, I say I'm a very original thought person, but sometimes to get the momentum that we need, it's to do something that somebody's already done. Right. So when you look at organizations like Bunker Labs that already had a framework and was in 29 cities before us right mm -hmm. now, we're, and then there's now there's 30 and it's and it's easy to, to plug into that system and do it. Same thing for Global Entrepreneurship Week. You know, they're in hundreds of communities all around the world. I saw how powerful that was in Tulsa and I wanted to bring that here because one thing about Vegas is you've got this hodgepodge of all these unicorn, amazing people from all over. Mm -hmm. But some of those people get here and they say, why don't you have one million cups? Why don't they have disrupt HR? Why don't mm -hmm. they have this? Why don't they have that? And for the ones that I care about the most, I want to bring those here. Um, and then slowly, I think we'll see more of those over time. But that's that's how I get people excited. But and sometimes that energy runs out, right? And sometimes people just get busy in the day to day. Mm -hmm. 